So today we're going to be reading A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. We already know that we can learn a lot about a character by looking at how the character's actions. By noticing a character's actions, we can figure out how a character feels and what they want and what they like and what their mental state is. Oftentimes, a character does not think or feel the same way throughout a whole story. This is called character change. Character change is when the character's mental state changes from the beginning to the end of the story. Today we're going to be reading A Bad Case of the Stripes. As we read, we will identify how our character changes from the beginning to the end of the story. Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All her friends hated lima beans and she wanted to fit in. Camilla always worried about what other people thought of her. Today, she was fretting even more than usual. It was her first day of school and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none of them seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to think for a minute. I remember when we last read this story, we learned about the, that some important information about Camilla in the very beginning of the story. Remember, in order to figure out how a character changes, good readers must first figure out how the, out the character's mental state and what they want in the beginning of the story. So far, we know that Camilla loves lima beans, but she won't eat them because her friends don't like them. She wants to fit in. The text also said she always worries about what other people think. And now it is the first day of school and she can't decide what to wear. I think Camilla's mental state is she is thinking, I really want to fit in and I'm worried that I won't. I really care what other people think about me and I am scared that they won't like me. Her mother ran into the room and she screamed too. Oh my goodness, she cried. You're completely covered in stripes. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe, and she looked like a rainbow. Miss, Mrs. Cream felt Camilla's forehead. Do I feel all right? she asked. I feel fine, Camilla answered. But just look at me. You get back to bed this instant, her mother ordered. You're not going to school today. Camilla was relieved. She didn't want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid of what the other kids would say and she had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes. Why was Camilla relieved she didn't have to go to school? That afternoon, Dr. Bum, or Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he exclaimed. I've never seen anything like it. Are you having any coughing, sneezing, runny nose, aches, pains, chills, hot flashes, dizzies, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncontrollable twitching? No, Camilla told him. I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bumble said, turning to Miss Cream. I don't see any reason why she couldn't go to school tomorrow. There is some ointment that should help clear up those stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And off he went. The next day was a disaster. Everyone in school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Crayon and Night of the Living Lollipop. She tried her best to act as if everything was normal, but when the class said the Pledge of Allegiance, her stripe turned red, white, and blue, and she broke out in stars. What is Camilla's mental state? How do you know? Other kids thought this was great. One yelled out, let's see some purple polka dots. Sure enough, Camilla turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, checkerboard, and the pattern of squares covered her skin. Soon everyone was calling out different shapes and colors, and poor Camilla was changing faster than you can change channels on a TV. That night, Mr. Harms, the school principal, said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Cream, he said. I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camilla at home from school. She's just too much of a distraction, and I've been getting calls from other parents. They're afraid the stripes might be contagious. Camilla was so embarrassed. She couldn't believe that two days ago, everyone liked her, and now nobody wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart, he asked. No, thank you, said Camilla. 
What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans, but she had been laughed at enough for one day. Hmm. Well, yes, I see. Dr. Mumble mumbled to when Mr. Cream phoned the next day. I think I'd better bring in the specialist. We'll be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in long white coats and introduced them to the creams. This is Dr. Grop, Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, and Dr. Young. Then the specialist went to work on Camilla, and they squeezed and jabbed and tapped and tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, concluded Dr. Grop. Or the measles, said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not chicken pox, put, put in Mr. Cricket. Or a sunburn, said Dr. Young. Try these, said the specialist. They each handed her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Take one of each before bed, said Dr. Grope. When they filled, then they filled, then they filled out the front door, followed by Dr. Bumble. At night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful. And when she woke up the next morning, she did feel different. But when she got dressed, her clothes didn't fit right. She looked in the mirror, and there, staring back at her, was a giant multicolored pill with her face on it. Dr. Bum Bumble rushed over as soon as Mrs. Cream called. But this time, in instead of the specialist, he brought in the experts. Dr. Gord and Mr. Mellon were the finest scientific minds of the land. Once again, Camilla was poked and prodded and looked at and listened to. The experts wrote down lots of numbers, and then they huddled together and whispered. Dr. Gord finally spoke. It might be a virus, he announced with authority, and suddenly fuzzy little virus balls appeared all over Camilla, or possibly some form of bacteria, said Mr. Mellon. Out popped squiggly little bacterial tails, or it could be a fungus, added Dr. Gord. Instantly, Camilla was covered with different colored fung fungus blotches. The experts look at Camilla and then each other. We need to go over these numbers again, back at the lab. Dr. Gord explained, we'll call you when we know something. But the experts didn't have a clue, much less to hear. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel were outside her house telling the story of the bizarre case of the incredible changing kid. Soon, a huge crowd was camped out and out, out on the front lawn. The creams were swamped with all kinds of remedies from psychologists, allergists, herbalists, nutritionalists, uh, psychics, an old, an old medicine man, a guru, and even a veterinarian. Each so-called cure only added to poor Camilla's strange appearance until it was hard to even recognize her. She sprouted roots and berries and crystals and feathers and a long furry tail, but nothing worked. How has Camilla's problem gotten worse? One day, a woman who called herself an environmental therapist claimed she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply. Become one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, Camilla groaned. Slowly, she started to melt into the walls of her room. Her bed became her mouth. Her nose was a, was a dresser, and the two paintings were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do, cried Mrs. Cream. It's just getting worse and worse, she began to sob. That moment, Mr. Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. He opened it. And there stood an old woman who was just as plump as sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I can help. She went into Camilla's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of her head. What, ha what we have here is a bad case of, the s of stripes. One of the worst I've ever seen. She pulled a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said. This might do the trick. Are those magic beans? asked Mrs. Cream. Oh my, no, replied the kind old woman. There's no such thing. There's just plain old lima beans. I'll bet you'd like some one at you, she asked Camilla. Camilla wanted a big heaping plate full of lima beans, more than just about anything, but she was afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said. 
No one likes lima beans, especially me. Oh, dear, the old woman said sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. She put the beans back in her bag and she started towards the door. Camilla watched the old woman walk away. Those beans would taste so good. And being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she had been through. She finally couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. I thought so, the old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of beans and popped them into Camilla's mouth. Mmm, said Camilla. Suddenly, the branches, feathers, and squiggly tails began to disappear. Then the whole room swirled around. When it stopped, there stood Camilla, and everything was back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there, somewhere. She patted Camilla on the head, then she went outside and vanished into the crowd. Afterward, Camilla wasn't quite the same. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she didn't care a bit. She ate all the lima beans she wanted, and she never even she never had even a touch of stripes again. What is Camilla's mental state at the end of the story? How has her mental state changed from the beginning to the end of the story?